To stand out, you will need a combination of three things. Your portfolio, your cover letter, and also your CV. Today, I'm going to share with you how to improve your CV. We'll cover the common mistakes that I see in candidates' CVs and how to fix them. Be sure to stick till the end because I have prepared 10 templates for you to use in your job applications. This template will save you hours and possibly days of time. Avoid all the common beginner mistakes and start applying for your dream career right away. First of all, make sure that your CV is in a shareable, print-ready format. A print-ready PDF helps ensure that the formatting is maintained no matter what computer or software that the recruiters use. And then you can add hyperlinks to the URL that you want recruiters to check out. I will usually design the CV first. On Figma itself, I will select this frame, click on export, select PDF, export. I will then drag the file to my Google Drive. Create a shareable link here. You can copy the link and remember to set the permissions that anyone on the internet with this link can view your CV. And right click on this file on Google Drive, I will select Manage Versions. You can see all the versions that I had in the past. In future, if you want to make changes to it, on Google Drive, you can just upload the file with the same name in the same place and it will save as the second version so that you don't have to send a new link every time you update your CV. Okay, so let's talk about content. Every day, recruiters receive hundreds of CVs. When a recruiter scans through your CV, they are really just looking for a few things. Firstly, is this person a great fit for the role? Secondly, is this person a great fit to the company culture in terms of the attitude and the personality? So include your name and a one-liner pitch. Think of it like an elevator pitch. A one-liner pitch will help recruiters understand what you do best in one sentence. Also, all these essential links like your website, portfolio links, email, and also your phone number should also be on your CV. Select this text here on Figma, create a link, and if you do a mail to, recruiters who click on your link will actually be able to create a new email and send to you right away. Same goes for your website. And if you don't like this formatting here, you want to remove that underline, you can do that on Figma by going inside here. So there you go, now you have custom links on your PDF. And all your social media links should be design related. Do not include your Twitter unless there's a good reason to do so. Always have your portfolio links as well. So in this case, the website is a portfolio link here. When it comes to your work experience, education and other achievements, make sure that they are in reverse chronological order. What this means is it is sorted by the most recent first and the oldest one will be at the last. The reason for doing this is because recruiters want to look at your most recent work experience first so that they can gauge whether you are a right fit for them. A strategy you can take for your CV is sort your information by the most impactful one first. Leave the least impactful one for the last. It's good to include some interests that you do or any hobbies or talents that you have. It could be a great conversation starter. It will help you stand out. You know, recruiters will remember you as the person who does oh, croissant baking but I don't do croissant baking by the way. And also the achievements will be great to help them gauge how well do you know your domain. Even if it's not related to design, it could be a plus point as well. Next up is to be relevant to the job that you're applying for. But what if you're planning to switch careers and you don't have prior design experience, what do you do then? So if you remember what I mentioned earlier, you have three things that you need to stand out. Your portfolio, your CV, and also your cover letter. You need a strong portfolio in order to succeed in an interview because you don't have prior design experience, so the recruiters will need to dig deeper and understand your design process to make sure that you are the right candidate that they are looking for. But in terms of the CV, turn your past experiences into your advantage. For example, if you're a software engineer, your knowledge in code would be a plus. You will know how to design scalable components for a product because you have the knowledge to code it yourself and you know how it feels like. If you're in sales, your ability to communicate with people, to empathize with your customers, which is a very strong skill that a designer should have, and also the ability to sell your designs or to sell a concept to stakeholders would also be a plus. If you're in marketing, your skills in understanding what customers really want and the ability to push growth in a product would also be an advantage that no one else can take from you. Even though you're doing a career switch right now, it is not necessarily a bad thing. Your past experiences could also bring value to the table. We are all multifaceted human beings. We are not meant to just do one thing in life. And of course, recruiters will realistically look at candidates with past design experiences. And while you cannot change what you have done in the past, what you can do is to strategize your CV and have your past experiences be as relevant to the job that you're applying for as possible. If you have worked in 10 different roles in the past, 
you do not have to have all 10 in a page. Keep it within one page. If your job is like 8 to 10 years ago and you have more than 4 experiences already, then do not bother including your CV. So take a look at this CV here. So if I see this CV, I will usually disregard it right away because the design is not pleasing, it's very cluttered, it's very messy. How will I depend on this person if the person cannot design her CV properly? Your job description should be effective and describes your role and the impact that you have done to the company or the product. I want to know what are the impact that you have made. I want to know how you have improved the metrics. I want to know what you have changed or transformed the company to the better. Do not say that you have designed a design system. It is not impactful to the recruiter. There's a dime and dozen people out there who has designed a design system, who has built a landing page. We have enough of these people already. What we want is a person who has not just designed a design system, but also have saved development time by 70%, has implemented scalable, consistent experiences with the design system throughout the app. Strategize your description. Instead of saying that you have designed a discovery experience for your product, a better description would be, you have designed a better discovery experience which drove 50% increase in session length together with your product managers and developers. In this statement itself, I will already know that firstly, you have designed a discovery experience, you have driven impact for the product, you have also the ability to work with cross-functional teams, one description has encapsulated everything that I'm looking for in a candidate. In terms of the length, keep it within 5 points. Recruiters will not read everything that you write. In case that you are not using bullet points, bold the points that you think are most impactful. For example, metrics or any improvements that you have significantly made for the company. So that when recruiters scan your CV, their eyes will just look at the points that they want to see. So let's take a look at this CV here. They have so many points here, but I do not see the impact that this candidate has. I know that you have presented research findings to stakeholders and executives. I know that you have designed usability tests, but that is part of your job role. Yes, you should still mention that you have done some research, but give me more information that is impactful. Maybe instead you could provide like designed and conducted usability tests and in return, you have discovered some user feedback, improved the product experience by 50% things like that would be much more relevant and useful to the recruiter than just telling me what you have done on your day-to-day -day job. There is one thing that I would like to point out. Do not include a skill meter. People like to include this skill meter, but it really doesn't add any substance to your profile. How do you determine a full bar of skills? What do you use to measure those skills? You may think that you are a 5 out of 10, but maybe you are an 8 out of 10. And how do you prove that? I rather show don't tell. So take a look at this CV here. He has listed down all these skills that he has, but they are all generic terms that anyone can claim they have. How do I know that you really do have these skills? Avoid listing generic skills that are just fluff. Show don't tell again and leave the rest to have your portfolio to prove that. It's time to talk about attention to details. You are applying for a design role. I will expect the candidate to pay attention to details. So in this CV here, the line height is very tight. Some texts are squeezed together and some are spaced out. Text is everywhere. The alignment is messy. I will expect a candidate to pay attention to details like typography. I will expect the candidate to also think about readability. If the candidate is not able to design a CV that is accessible, easy to read, easy to scan, it is consistent in terms of the typography, the alignment and the styling, then I wouldn't trust this candidate to design my product. And also, spell check your document. Do not leave any mistakes for the recruiter to find because if I see any mistakes that a person has never paid attention to, it will be a straight no for me as well. I don't recommend having too many colors on your CV. Blue and brown, they are actually competing against each other for my attention. Think about the experience of your CV. Do you want people to focus on the word experience or do you want people to focus on the text like UX designer, UX designer developer? In your CV, I do not recommend you to have your paragraphs from one end of the page to the other. When a person reads your CV, their eyes will need to go from left all the way to the right. So that is why people tend to keep their CVs in two columns or three columns. So in your CV, keep in mind that your paragraph widths shouldn't be like end to end so that it's easy for people to scan. 
Some of you have a question where, you know, how much personality can one add to your CV? Try not to over-design your CV. Sometimes too much design will not do you any good. Some large companies use a system called ATS, which is called the Applicant Tracking System, to scan through a huge number of CVs before they go through the human eye. If your CV is unreadable with all the fancy designs, the ATS will straight away disregard your CV and it goes straight to the dumpster. So this is why we keep our CVs clean and simple and minimal. Also, it is highly recommend that you don't change experience to something like what I did in the past or education to uh, this is what I studied because the ATS system will track and scan through based on the text and match the keywords to this text. So if you put something else that is out of the norm, the system will totally miss it. The keywords in your CV is key to helping you pass the first round of screening by a robot. So I have provided 10 templates here where you can download in the link below. If you find this useful, you can purchase it or you can download for free if you are tight on your budget. And in these 10 templates, you will have the space to add your one-liner elevated pitch, profile photo, and also your skill set. Make sure again to hyperlink your URLs before you export them as a PDF to send to recruiters. So if you want to save time and you don't know where to start with your CV, this template will be sufficient for you to get through your interviews. Focus the rest of your energy on your case study on your portfolio. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.